Ever since 5050 blew up worldwide, everyone was expecting for the group to only reach new heights. Well, that was until the lawsuits from all sides hit the news, and now the group's future is unknown and possibly over. But what happened exactly for things to turn out this way? 5050 have broken record after record ever since their song Cupid came out. But they didn't get there without going through a few difficulties, and that's all thanks to their CEO's sacrifices to get the group where it is today. Even though their debut release wasn't very successful, the CEO did everything to have it released in the first place. John Hong Joon, the CEO of Attract, shared that following the release of The 50, he underwent significant challenges to finance the album's production. These challenges included selling his car, opting for inexpensive meals, and even operating tea stalls to generate funds. But before we get to explaining what's going on with 5050 right now, let's talk about how the agency operated. According to Sports Soul, John Hong Joon and Tui Sung Ho are referred to as co-representatives or co-CEOs of Attract, with producer Xi'an joining in later. However, there was some complexity regarding Xi'an's role within the company. On LinkedIn, Xi'an has identified himself as the CEO of Attract and also serves as the chief producer. He is also the CEO of The Givers, a company that collaborates with Attract on a contractual basis to co-manage the group. The Korea Times also described him as a co-CEO in May of 2023. Hence, the most accurate description that people were able to give was recognizing Jon Hong Joon, Choi Sung Ho, and Xi'an as the three joint leaders of Attract. Even though Xi'an has more experience in the field, Jon Hong Joon has tried his hand at managing a group too. In the past, Hong Joon successfully managed Korean singer Jo Kwon Woo, a prominent figure in the 90s. He also had the privilege of managing renowned rapper Yoon Mi Rae and played a crucial role in discovering rapper Bobby Geem. Yet, Xi'an was a big part of why the group became so successful in the first place. The arrangement proved to be highly beneficial for both parties involved. Xi'an was known to be the primary creative force behind the company. It was speculated that he was the one that emphasized the importance of the members learning English to establish a strong connection with the international audience and excel in international interviews. Most importantly, Xi'an took charge of producing their music, and he also came up with the idea for the English version of the song, which subsequently gained viral popularity. Notably, he secured 50-50 a partnership with Warner Music Korea through his connections, which is a pretty big deal considering that they were a rookie group from an unknown company. But when 50-50 were at the peak of their success and were even selected to be on the soundtrack of the new Barbie movie, that's when the promotions abruptly stopped. The group weren't promoting their music, and the company wasn't being clear about why, so the fans were understandably concerned. Why weren't the girls giving interviews and performing everywhere considering that they were having all these huge opportunities? The company then came out with a statement saying that one of the members was dealing with health problems, for which she had to get surgery for and was advised to rest. But once more information about the company was revealed, more specifically about what was going on behind the scenes, people were wondering if that was really the reason. Attract made a sudden and very surprising announcement on on June 23rd, hinting that there's an agency that made attempts to poach the members of 5050 and spread slanderous statements about Attract. While the news came out of nowhere, it wasn't all that shocking that other companies were trying to get their hands on the group. What Attract had done in a very short amount of time, other bigger companies in K-pop had tried for years. Who wouldn't want the girls in their company? Then, on June 25th, John Hong Joon released another statement expressing his intention to take legal action against these malicious external agencies, still without naming any names. He also expressed concern concerns for the well-being of the 50-50 members during this challenging period, but this is where K-pop fans started getting suspicious of the whole thing. If the company was dealing with a problem like this, why didn't they solve the issue in silence? Some thought of the whole thing as an attempt at noise marketing by the CEO, while a lot were wondering if the girls were being mistreated by the company, and Attract is trying to make up a story about them being approached by other companies so that they can hide their wrongdoings. But wait, things get a lot juicier. On June 26th, Attract revealed that it was none other than Warner Music Korea's, their overseas distributor who was involved as a collaborator with the external agency, trying to persuade the 50-50 members to break their contracts or have Attract sell the rights to the group. The company also claimed to possess solid evidence of Warner Music Korea's illegal attempts to poach the members, which is a pretty serious accusation, especially towards such a big company as Warner Music. A lot of people argued that this was only hurting the girls since they didn't need an issue like this right now. Warner Music Korea responded officially on the same day, confirming that they they have been the authorized overseas distributor of 5050 since April 1st, 2023. They expressed their continuous efforts to leverage the resources and networks of Warner Music Group to amplify the remarkable accomplishments of 5050 and their agency. They expressed disappointment over the emergence of unfounded suspicions and conveyed regret regarding a track submission of alleged evidence. The situation gets a lot more interesting though, as we have another twist to the story. On June 27th, a track made another surprising announcement, revealing that they filed a criminal complaint against 
against none other than Xi'an. Yes, the man that basically made 50-50. A tract went on to accuse Xi'an of acquiring the copyright to the song Cupid secretly and unlawfully. They further alleged malicious actions, including obstructing business operations, committing fraud, breach of trust, and engaging in activities such as deleting project data and company mail accounts. A tract stated that the givers, Xi'an's company, failed to inform them about the purchase of the song's copyrights, conducting the transaction covertly. Shocking, right? Now, where does this leave 50-50? Some were thinking that the girls have left the company already and went with Xi'an and the givers, which is why Attract is making such a big deal out of everything. To some fans, if the members were to leave, the givers would be the obvious choice for the members here because, after all, Xi'an made 50-50 what they are today. These fans also expressed that they found Attract shady from the start from the way that they were managing the girls. Little did they know that, after all, they would turn out to be right in their suspicions. Other fans think that if Xi'an genuinely prioritized the well-being of the girls, he would have refrained from doing this to attract in the first place. With his extensive experience in the industry, Xi'an should have been aware that lawsuits of this nature tend to be protracted, leaving the members without influence over their activities or future throughout the legal proceedings. If all of this is happening because the givers want to have 50-50 as their own artists due to their sudden success, then they might also drop them if they prove to be unnecessary to them in the future or if their popularity falters. However, 50-50 seem to be more concerned about the way that Attract is treating them rather than the legal battle between the two CEOs. It was reported on June 28th that the four members had filed for a provisional injunction on June 19th so that they can suspend their exclusive contracts with the company due to issues that they have harmed their reputation and unpaid wages. The members' legal representatives mentioned in their announcement that the trial was still in progress and that they tried to bring up the members' issues to the company and even sent out a letter to request correction, but Attract never responded and instead gave statements to the media. This, according to the law firm, only damaged the reputation of the group and its members by claiming that they were manipulated by Xi'an to sign contracts with Warner Music Korea. The agency went on to say that Attract failed to provide a clear explanation for the contract violation and disregarded the members' concerns. They dismissed the situation as an extortion attempt and revealed that a member was going to go through surgery without consulting everyone involved. And according to the law firm, this has left the members deeply disappointed and frustrated. Thus, members of 5050 brought up concerns about Attract not meeting their contractual obligations, including non-transparent settlements and enforcing these settlements despite the fact that the members' health issues affected performances. The legal representatives noted that the members made this decision collectively and independently, and in the end, requested that Attract refrain from further damaging the reputation of the 5050 members. While the members are being applauded for their bravery to stand up to the company, many think that this could be the end for them. It will take several months, if not years, before resolution is reached in court. During this period, they will be unable to promote anything and will essentially have to rebuild their career from scratch. Some think that the girls are acting rashly since they shouldn't expect to be paid right off the bat, especially since they haven't promoted a lot, haven't attended any events or festivals, or done any advertisements. Additionally, their physical sales don't match their streams, and we all know that they won't get paid a lot just because the song got streamed a lot. But, but even though Attract hasn't talked about the members' lawsuits, they did take another step in order to get the control back by filing a criminal complaint against Xi'an. According to a June 28th report, a track targeted four individuals, one of them being Xi'an. Xi'an and the givers have yet to respond to any of the accusations as of June 28th. What are your thoughts on the whole issue? Share them in the comments with us. Bye guys!